We're coming down the home stretch. Let's go on to discuss mechanical transducer arrays. A mechanical transducer contains multiple ring and or annular piezoelectric elements that rotate at a constant rate to produce an ultrasound beam. This ultrasound beam is cone-shaped and can be steered and focused in a two-dimensional manner. Therefore, there are no slice thickness artifacts to concern with as you would expect for a linear or curvilinear or even a phase array transducer. However, there are many moving parts that are housed with an acoustic liquid medium. Therefore, there are issues with reliability. The scan pattern is trapezoidal. This picture is of a typical mechanical transducer array used inside hospitals for central venous catheterization purposes. On the left-hand side is a focused view, a close-up view of the transducer itself, within which house a configuration of multiple transducer arrays, in this case a five transducer array configuration. Each transducer array is a annular element that has a bullseye pattern. Each ring of the annular element consists of a ring of piezoelectric elements that are shaped in the ring. Each of these uh, transducer arrays are rotating with an acoustic liquid medium at 3,000 rotations per minute. The ultrasound beam transmitted is cone-shaped and is produced and transmitted through a, an appropriate ultrasound window. In summary, for mechanical probes, beam focusing is performed electronically. In older systems, the focus is fixed. However, in newer systems, there is variable focusing that allows for intricate and advanced intracardiac imaging. Beam steering, unfortunately, by definition, is still performed mechanically. As a result, applications such as Doppler, Power Doppler, or Color Doppler imaging are difficult to implement. As we mentioned earlier, the scans are accomplished by the rotation of many annular ring elements housed within acoustic coupling liquid, and as the transducer assembly moves, there are reliability issues. Let's talk about grating lobes. Grating lobes are unwanted energies that are transmitted and spread out at angles other than the primary paths. They are specific to array transducers due to their multi-element structure and periodicity. Increasing frequency and the increased pitch of transducer elements would cause more grating lobes. In order to reduce or minimize grating lobes, you can solve it with appetization, which is amplitude modulation of the transducer elements, or you can set the spacings between individual transducer elements to be less than one-half the wavelength of the ultrasound beam. If the spacing is between one-half to one wavelength, then the grating lobe issue is uh, dependent on the steering angle. Let's do a question. What does epitization help to solve regards to ultrasound transducers? Is it A, improves near-field focusing? Is it B, it strengthens grating lobes? Is it C, it improves axial resolution? Or is it D, it weakens side lobes? You may pause the video to think about your response. The correct response is D, weakens side lobes. Abilization helps to minimize both grating and side lobes. The latter improves lateral resolution, but not axial. Let's move on and talk about transmit focusing. In a transducer array system, by adjusting the electronic delay sequences of the individual transducer elements, you're able to modulate the focal distance. Transmit focusing is user-dependent. A user can select multiple transmit focal zones, although at a cost of reduced frame rates. The cartoon on the next slide illustrates an 8-element transducer array with the appropriate delay generators attached to each element. To achieve far focusing, you need to apply more delay in the center elements as opposed to the periphery. By adding up the individual ultrasound beams and their wavefronts via Huygens principle, you have a resulting wavefront which is focused on the red dot which is located in the far field for a particular radius of curvature. So Huygens principles is the basis of both far field and near field focusing. If you want to achieve near field focusing, you have to make the delay elements 
the sequence be more extreme, so there's even more delay in the center as opposed to the periphery. By adding the individual ultrasound beams from each element together, you get a tighter focusing circle, which is a much smaller radius of curvature. Therefore, you have a resultant focal location which is closer to the transducer surface. Huygens principle is the basis for this phenomenon. By adjusting the electronic delay sequence, you can achieve focusing in whatever distance you desire. Let's do a question. The electronic pulse delay sequence is critical to all of the ultrasound techniques below except for which one? Is it A, beam appetization? Is it B, beam formation? Is it C, beam focusing? Or is it D, beam steering? You may pause the video to gather your response. The correct answer is A, beam abutization. Abutization per se depends on minimizing electronic pulse amplitude as opposed to delay. Delays affect the three other choices. Let's talk about dynamic receive focusing in a little more detail. Now echoes are generated by a reflector in the body tissue. They come back to the transducer out of phase. Because the signals arrive at different times, due to differences in distances traveled, you need to bring these individual signals back into phase. And the way to do that is to adjust the electronic delays in order to get a coherent signal. Here you see that the output beam is very scattered and low amplitude. This is because the focal point gives off the resultant signals that are out of phase as perceived by the individual transducer elements. By applying appropriate delays such that there's more delay in the periphery as opposed to the center, you're able to create a coherent and in phase and high amplitude signal. Furthermore, unlike transmit focusing, during we see focus, it can be swept through a range of depths to pick up the multiple echoes produced by just one transmit pulse. It is similar in concept to somebody using a video camera to film a child riding his or her bike as he or she moves away from you and then subsequently riding back towards you. It's all done automatically and the focusing is done with distance. Dynamic equals automatic. Let's do another question. Which of the following features is not controlled by the ultrasound operator? Is it A, transmit focusing? Is it B, ultrasound frequency? Is it C, dynamic receive focusing? Or is it D, setting multiple focal zones? The correct response is C, dynamic receive focusing. Transmit focusing and ultrasound frequency are both directly controlled by the operator. Now let's move on to dynamic aperture. To maintain beam width at a lateral con resolution that is constant, an ultrasound, ultrasound reflection from deeper focal depths must be processed with a larger aperture to maintain the overall beam width. For shallow reflectors, a small receiving aperture is needed, whereas for deeper reflectors, you need to have a larger receiving aperture in order to keep the beam width constant at all distances. In this case, you have a focal point that is close to the surface of the transducer. For a given focal point that moves deeper into the tissue, you need more elements at the receiving end or the aperture to keep the focal width constant. Here, for a further focal point, further into the tissue, in this case, you need eight elements or higher aperture to maintain the same beam width. By increasing aperture as focal point gets deeper, the beam width is kept constant. This is akin to the F number in photography. The purpose of dynamic aperture is to minimize variation in beam width with depth. Unlike transmit focusing, dynamic receive aperture is performed automatically without operator input. One more question. When the transducer array aperture is increased, which of the following effect is not true or false? Is it A, it decreases divergence angle? 
B. It decreases focal distance. C. It decreases beam width. Or is it D? It improves lateral resolution. You may pause the video to think about your response. The correct answer is B. It decreases focal distance. Remember, NZL is d squared over 4 lambda. As the aperture is increased, the focal distance is increased as well, whereas divergence angle and beam width both decrease. We have now come to the end of the transducer lecture. Thank you for your attention.